Hi there, this is Caitlin Porter from the Mongoose Enablement Team. Welcome to part three of the Mongoose Hello World training series. In today's video, we are going to touch on the technical architecture of a simple request in Mongoose. We will also introduce working with the event system and a few key concepts in developing with minimal code. Let's start by logging back into Mongoose. Let's go ahead and open our items form. You should see it in your list of recently used forms. Remember that the form opens in add mode. To query the data, hit the refresh icon from the toolbar. So what is exactly happening in the background? When we hit refresh, Mongoose sent a load collection IDO request XML to the server where the IDO runtime processes the XML and builds a SQL select statement which was sent to the database. Results were returned from the database where the IDO runtime packed them up into a response XML and sent them back to Mongoose to be rendered on the form. This forms the basis for all of the operations on the forms you build, and this is all taken care of by the Mongoose infrastructure and does not require any coding from the user. Suppose there were millions of rows in our items table and we only wanted to see items whose name started with B. To do this, hit the filter in place icon on the toolbar and type in B and the asterisk character. Then hit the filter icon again from the toolbar and it should return our one item that starts with the letter B. You can also combine filters in Mongoose. Let's go back into filter mode by hitting the icon from the toolbar and clear out our item filter. Then in the cost field, type in greater than 10 and unit of measure select dozen. In the back end, this will build a SQL select statement that combines the cost and unit of measure to return only values that meet those two criteria. Hit the filter icon to execute that filter and you should see it return one row that meets our criteria. We want the items form to refresh when it opens so we can see a list of all of the items. To do so, we need to set the initial command to refresh. Select the designer icon from the toolbar to open the form in design mode. Select Site Default for the editing scope and hit OK. You might see a prompt that tells you to unload your global objects. Make sure that if you ever change your editing scope to unload the global form objects before opening a form, this will ensure that you're opening the correct version of the form. Hit OK. Once the form opens in design mode, expand the behavior section in the properties panel on the right. Here, you can use the initial command property to specify a command that controls what happens when the form opens. Setting the initial command to refresh will open the form and query all of the data. An initial command of filter will bring up the associated query form where you can specify a variety of filter criteria. Filter in place will open the form in filter in place mode so we can query specific data. Add will open the form without querying any data with a new row inserted into the primary collection. This is the default behavior for any forms you build. The last one in the list is event, and this allows you to execute a form event as the form initial command. We want to return a list of all the items, so select refresh for the initial command and save your form. Then switch back to runtime mode and reopen your form. You can now see it returning a list of all of the items in our table. Mongoose has a built-in diagnostics tool that can be used to view messages and operations in the current session. This can capture how events are interacting with forms as we use them. These messages are captured and displayed in real time and they can be filtered, searched, and saved to a file. To turn on diagnostics, go to View, User Preferences. Select the Diagnostics section on the left and check the Enable checkbox to turn them on. Next, switch to the Form tab up top and select the Events checkbox to capture form events. We also want to include event handlers. Select the Include checkbox under Event Handler section. Select OK and open the Diagnostics tool by going to View Diagnostic Log. Let's view this in action. Close your items form and clear the log messages from the Diagnostics panel. Reopen your form and you should then see the form events that trigger upon form open. You can see the standard form refresh event is being called because we set our initial command to refresh. You can also create your own events. In the next example, let's create a custom event that can run off a standard Mongoose event. Switch back to the Design Mode tab and let's select Button from our toolbox on the left. Draw the button on the form. With the component selected, expand the event section on the right. Set the primary event on the button to Standard Form Refresh. Save your form and switch back to Runtime Mode. Reopen your form and clear the diagnostic log. Then hit your button 
and you'll see in the Diagnostics panel the standard form refresh event that's being triggered. Let's go back to the Design Mode tab and open the Details pane at the bottom. Select Event Handlers tab and hit New at the bottom. Event handlers wait for events to be executed and respond. They won't do anything without an event to trigger them. Event handlers are stored in metadata and have response types or actions. The event that we want to handle is standard form refresh completed. Select OK, and for the response type, select Prompt. Select the ellipsis next to the parameters field, type in Hello World under the message text field, and hit OK. What do we just do? We created a custom event that will intercept the standard mongoose event standard form refresh and will trigger upon completion of that event. Switch back to the runtime mode tab and reopen your form. You will see that once the form opens, we get our prompt. This is because we have the standard form refresh event being triggered on our initial command. Since our button is executing the same event, we expect to see our event handler triggered when we click it. One of the ways Mongoose allows you to develop with minimal coding is by using substitution keywords that are interpreted by Mongoose. Switch back to our Design Mode tab and select Event Handlers from the Details pane. Select our standard form refresh completed event and hit New at the bottom. Let's add another event handler to our standard form refresh completed event. Under Type, select Set Values. Select the ellipsis on the Parameters field. Then select the ellipsis on the Variables field and hit new on the right. Now we want to create a temporary form variable. Variables are mechanisms for storing data needed at runtime. Variables are name value pairs. They can be temporary or persistent, global to all forms, or only available to the current form. Let's name our variable var test. For the value, type in p, parentheses, description, and parentheses. Here, we are using a substitution keyword that will populate the variable var test at runtime. Select OK, and next, let's bind our variable to an edit component on the form. Select Edit from the toolbox and draw it on your form. With the component still selected, expand the data source section from the properties panel on the right. Set the binding type to variable and click the ellipsis on the binding field. Let's bind it to our variable var test and hit OK. Save your form and switch back to the Runtime Mode tab and reopen your form. You can see that when the form opens and our standard form refresh event is triggered, our variable var test is being substituted with our description property. But what if we wanted to create a custom event that was only triggered when we told it to? Switch back to the Design Mode tab and let's go to our standard form refresh completed event. Let's change the event to a custom event named test. Then change the second event handler to test as well. Now, if you expand test, you'll see that both of your event handlers are now sitting in your custom event. Let's change the primary event on our button to use our custom event. Select the button component and expand the events section. Let's change our primary event to test. Save your form and reopen it in runtime mode. You will notice now that when we open our form, our event's not being triggered. That's because we moved it from our standard form refresh event to a custom event. First, clear the log messages, then select the button. You can see the two events that were triggered when we hit our button. You can see the test event at the top, followed by our event handlers prompt and set var values below. Let's recap what we did today. First, we looked at the flow of data between Mongoose and the IDEO runtime service. We touched on basic filtering functionality, variables, and working with standard and custom events in Mongoose. In part four, we will explore how to add a column and property to our existing items table and we'll start working with themes and building classes that we can use in our inheritance model. For more information and resources, check out the Mongoose portal. Thanks for watching.